One of the most puzzling parts about Stoicism is that the Stoics seem a little too open to the idea of self-deletion. Epictetus, a Stoic that everyone who's a fan of Stoicism has heard of, is recorded having a conversation with a student who's worried about being exiled, which was a common thing to happen in ancient Rome at the time. Epictetus tells his student that it's no big deal to be exiled, as he'll just need to leave Rome. Who cares? But not everywhere that people are exiled to is the same, the student tells Epictetus. He's worried about being exiled to somewhere like Yara, a particularly harsh island that's similar to living in a smoke-filled house. Epictetus retorts with, if it suits you, you'll go there. If not, there's somewhere else you can go instead of Giara, to that place where he who's banishing you will have to go in his turn. Epictetus is referring to taking yourself out of the game here. He's saying that sometimes, if you find yourself in an uninhabitable place with no hope of escape, it can make sense to self-delete instead and not worry about it. The Stoics didn't think of self-deletion as a big deal because it's within your realm of control. If you don't like your situation, it's fine. The door remains open. Epictetus would always say. This is somewhere that we're all going anyway, so if you're in a situation you can't get out of, you can choose this as an option. No harm, no foul. Personally, I think this is a little weird. We all have our thing. What Epictetus doesn't mention about Chiara, though, is that his very own teacher was exiled on that island. The legendary Stoic, Musonius Rufus, was exiled on Chiara, and not only didn't succumb to despair or opt to take himself out, he actually got better. He was exiled on this inhospitable island by Nero, which as we mentioned, was like living in a smoke-filled house. While there, he managed to find a spring that gave clean water to the other local exiles, and he built a little community as well. After he was recalled to Rome, he was exiled again, and again, before finally dying of old age. The man refused to succumb to despair, and he refused to die. Instead of calling him the Roman Socrates, as he's been remembered as throughout history, we could call him the Cockroach Stoic. He just refused to die, and he didn't let any of this affect him negatively either. Now the question is, why didn't Rufus choose self-deletion when so many others would have? Especially since the Stoics always talk about how it's not that bad. Now he wasn't necessarily against it, he also just felt it required discernment on when was the right time or not. One who by living is of use to many, he said, has not the right to choose to die, unless by dying he may be of use to more. In time, he came back to Rome from his exile and taught a young, charismatic slave who would one day be known across the Roman world, Epictetus. This young Stoic would immortalize Musonius Rufus as the man who helped to shape him. In terms of philosophy, Rufus was ahead of his time in that for him, there was no reason women couldn't study philosophy. It is not men alone who possess eagerness and a natural inclination towards virtue, he wrote, but women also. Women are pleased no less than men by noble and just deeds and reject the opposite of such actions. Since that is so, why is it appropriate for men to seek out and examine how they might live, that is, to practice philosophy, but not women? This is something that we've seen in our own practical philosophy club. We usually have a 50-50 split between men and women, and the different energy that women bring to the table is so refreshing and valuable. One of the biggest mistakes, in my opinion, that the old Greeks made was to assume that women didn't have anything to add to philosophy and not allow them to study. We aren't the same by any means. But the benefits and outlook that the women bring to our philosophy circles are truly beautiful. Musonius Rufus was also a big proponent of hard work in the pursuit of virtuous goals. If one accomplishes some good, though with toil, the toil passes, but the good remains, he said. If one does something dishonorable with pleasure, the pleasure passes, but the dishonor remains. He also thought of exile as an opportunity to adjust yourself to the harshness that is natural for human beings, but that we forget by living in luxury and softness. Exile gives you a chance to realize how little is required to live a life of serenity. Musonius Rufus was a man who lived his philosophy and left behind a near flawless record, unlike his predecessor and contemporary Seneca, who made a few too many compromises for most scholars. Musonius Rufus stuck by his Stoic principles. This doggedness was key in helping our school of philosophy survive, after it was systematically attacked and nearly erased from memory by several Roman emperors who recognized Stoic ideology as a threat to their power. And one final Musonius Rufus quote that I'll offer you to keep in mind every day. We should not use philosophy like a herbal remedy to be discarded when we're through. Rather, we must allow philosophy to remain with us, continually guarding our judgments throughout life, forming part of our daily regimen, like eating a nutritious diet or taking physical exercise.